Hello everyone, welcome back to Folger Channel. And today, we have a gripping story that unfolds on the geopolitical stage. Australia, the United States and Japan have united to demonstrate strength in the face of rising tensions in the Pacific. As the world watches, Australia has joined forces with the United States and Japan in a bold move to address escalating tensions in the Philippine Sea. The three nations, concerned about the growing influence of a Chinese military island, have come together to send a clear message of unity and deterrence. The Philippine Sea, a vital waterway, has become a focal point of tensions, with the emergence of a Chinese military presence raising concerns among neighboring nations. In a historic move, Australia, the United States and Japan have declared a united front against any aggressive actions in the Philippine Sea. This alliance, aimed at maintaining peace and stability in the region, marks a turning point in international relations. For the past several months, China has been steadily increasing its pressure on the Philippines in the disputed waters of the South China Sea. In particular, China has actively interfered with the small Philippine garrison hosted to Second Thomas Shoal. A vigorous U.S. response is required to deter further Chinese escalation. The Philippine Marines, living aboard a rusting World War I era landing ship, are reliant on regular resupply of food and water from the main Philippine islands. Chinese Coast Guard vessels and fishing boats have repeatedly tried to prevent Philippine ships from bringing supplies, in effect attempting to lay siege to the tiny outpost. In the most recent incidents, the Chinese have disabled one Philippine resupply vessel with water cannons and engaged in dangerous maneuvers that led to a collision between a Chinese and a Philippine vessel. These Chinese efforts reflect a sophisticated exploitation of gray zone and hybrid warfare techniques. By relying on CCG and ostensibly civilian craft, although the fishing boats are almost certainly part of China's substantial maritime militia force, Beijing tries to blur the nature of its intervention and avoid the image of using armed force. Five Australian warships are conducting military exercises in the Philippine Sea alongside the American and Japanese navies amid simmering regional security tensions with China. An Australian Joint Task Group, led by HMAS Canberra, has joined up with the U.S. Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group and a Japanese destroyer for a trilateral exercise ahead of larger-scale war games in Hawaii. Commander of the Australian Joint Task Group, Major General Susan Coyle, said the opportunity to work alongside Japan and the U.S. was invaluable. Maintaining security and safety at sea requires navies to be able to cooperate seamlessly, Susan Coyle said in a statement released by the Defense Department. The combined activities between our navies demonstrates a high degree of interoperability and capability between Australia, Japan, and the U.S. Over the next two days, the three navies will conduct various training exercises aimed at improving interoperability as they work to keep the Indo-Pacific region free and open. For the United States, this Chinese concern should be a central part of U.S. responses, which need to be vigorous and explicit. The December 10 State Department expression of support for the Philippines, underscoring that an armed attack against Philippine forces anywhere would trigger the U.S.-Philippine Mutual Defense Treaty is a good start. But Washington needs to go further, since the messages have not led to Chinese de-escalation. The first option is to undertake sharper responses in the Red Sea to how the attacks on shipping. This is not to suggest that China is somehow behind those attacks, but Beijing is clearly watching U.S. actions globally, and a U.S. failure to respond to attacks on U.S. ships is likely to mislead Beijing into seeing U.S. weakness and ambivalence rather than commitment. After all, if the United States will appease a weak power such as Yemen or a non-national group such as the Houthis. Speaking from Washington, 
The Pentagon boss also signaled the U.S. military would conduct more freedom of navigation operations FONOPS, to challenge Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea. In 2019, we conducted the greatest number of freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea in the 40-year history of the FONOVS program, and we will keep up the pace this year," he said. While condemning Chinese maritime activity, he expressed hope that he could visit China by the end of the year to discuss areas of mutual interest. Before the year is out, I hope to visit the PRC for the first time as secretary in order to enhance cooperation on areas of common interest, establish the systems necessary for crisis communications, and reinforce our intentions to openly compete in the international system," he said. Notably, China has refrained from employing either People's Liberation Army Navy vessels or lethal force. This is likely due to concerns about potential escalation, and especially about possible U.S. intervention. As a recent State Department statement explicitly noted, the United States reaffirmed that Article IV of the 1951 U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty extends to armed attacks on Philippine armed forces, public vessels, or aircraft, including those of its Coast Guard anywhere in the South China Sea. The joint military exercises and naval deployments by Australia, the United States, and Japan serve as a powerful display of solidarity. The nations are demonstrating their commitment to ensuring freedom of navigation and maritime security in the Philippine Sea. As news of this alliance reverberates across the globe, it has sparked various reactions. Diplomatic circles, military experts, and the public are closely monitoring the implications of this strategic move. How will China respond? What does it mean for the future of the Pacific? And that concludes our in-depth coverage of the Australia-US-Japan alliance in the face of challenges in the Philippine Sea. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more updates on global affairs.